What's up guys, this is Paco Minel back with another video review. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at one of Palette's latest GPU offerings, the Palette GT1030 Low Profile Graphics Card. Many publications have overlooked this graphics card and I feel it is necessary to shed some light on this very peculiar product. It is particularly interesting because the GPU only costs about $79 and Nvidia promises faster than GTX 750 performance. Do note however that this is not a graphics card intended for gaming, it is designed to be the ideal step up from integrated graphics chipsets. As a YouTube content creator, I often get questions about what hardware I use. It's a common misconception that you need high-end gear for editing videos, but it is true that you would have a hard time working without a dedicated video card. The GT1030 boasts serious value for money. That said, we're going to be testing the GT1030 in a battery of real-world multimedia applications, synthetic benchmarks, and non-demanding titles such as esports games. Let's put this card to the test, shall we? The GPU's box has a simple design indicative of the product's low-profile nature. As per usual, the main technical specifications are listed at the back of the box. The small box measures 5 inches long, telling you immediately that the card itself has a very small footprint. The package doesn't come with anything except the standard anti-static protective wrap that contains the graphics card itself. Since the card is powered entirely by the PCIe slot, the package does not come with any power cables. The GT1030 is based off the same Pascal architecture that powers the entire GeForce 10 series line of graphics cards. With this in mind, it is safe to assume that the card has decent performance despite its humble specifications on paper. The first variant of the Pascal architecture succeeds the Maxwell architecture. Manufactured with a 16 nanometer technology, it has a large L2 cache, which allows Nvidia to produce graphics card with relatively small memory data transfer rates without causing too much impact on overall performance. Furthermore, the shaders have been redesigned and are both more powerful and energy efficient. The GT1030 equips a GPU code named GP108 and offers 384 shader processing units, 32 TMUs, and 16 ROPs on a 64-bit memory interface. A central unit runs at 1,252 MHz and goes up to 1,506 MHz in turbo mode, while the memory clock operates at 1,250 MHz. The memory bus is 64-bit and the memory architecture is GT. DDR5. As for display input types, the card only supports DVI connection and HDMI. Given the graphics card's humble specifications, it would indicate that the card would perform somewhere between the GT740 and GTX 750. We will take a look at some benchmarks later on in this video to confirm this. The graphics card boasts features found in higher end offerings such as DirectX 12 support and support for GameStream, G-Sync, GPU Boost 2.0, GeForce Experience, PhysX, and other technologies. Probably one of the most impressive aspects of this video card is its extremely low power consumption ideal for machines used in a professional workspace environment. With a rated board TDP of 30 watts, it requires at least a 300 watt PSU and relies entirely on the PCI slot for power. The GT1030 is a low-end graphics card that focuses on games requiring minimum graphics performance and is not directly intended for gaming use. Rather, it is intended as an upgrade from integrated graphics for use with multimedia applications such as video editing software and photo editing software. Consequently, the GT1030 will come with a budget price tag and will be available for as little as $79. As for my test bed in this video, I opted not to pair this graphics card with a high-end system in order to keep performance results realistic. It would be safe to assume that most consumers looking to buy this card would pair it with entry-level systems equipped with an i3 or Ryzen 1500 processor, as well as mid-range systems such as the one I am using for the battery of tests. I paired the Palette GT1030 with the Ryzen 1600 and 8GB of DDR4 memory, which is pretty standard for machines intended for video rendering and photo editing. As for testing methodologies, I ran benchmarks in games using graphics settings that would be appropriate for an entry-level card that is not intended for gaming use necessarily. All tests were done in 1080p resolution with anti-aliasing turned off using the latest drivers from Nvidia. Throughout the tests, I will be mentioning performance comparisons to the card's Maxwell architecture predecessor, namely the GT740 GPU. The tests will consist of Adobe Premiere Pro 1080p video rendering using the GPU's CUDA cores, Cinebench OpenGL testing, Unigen's Heaven Benchmark, 3D Mark CloudGate, and popular games namely Overwatch, Dota 2, and PUBG. Here are the results for 1080p video rendering in Adobe Premiere Pro when I rendered a 12-minute video.
Here are the results for the Cinebench OpenGL test. Now for the Unigen Heaven benchmark. Next is the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark intended for entry level systems. Let's begin with our real world gaming tests. First up is Overwatch. Now for Dota 2 performance results. And finally, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Throughout all tests, the card performed almost 80% faster than the GT740 and was really close to the GTX 750. It is important to note that this graphics card is not intended for gaming use. However, I threw in a bunch of non-demanding esports titles just for fun and to give you an accurate representation of its performance in real-world applications. You'll find that in modest settings at 1080p without anti-aliasing, the card is very capable of achieving playable frame rates. This really surprised me. However, if you're really serious about gaming, I would recommend the GTX 1050 at the bare minimum. Now that we've seen performance results in synthetic benchmarks in real-world applications, I will take the test further by overclocking the card. Note that it is not recommended to overclock this card due to its low-profile active cooling solution, but of course since this is a comprehensive video review, overclocking is a must. The small cooler impressively kept the card's temperature at 55 degrees Celsius during the battery of tests. After tweaking the card, I was able to push an additional 97 MHz on the core clock and an additional 224 MHz on the memory clock, resulting in an approximate 4% performance increase. Not bad at all. The average power draw remained at 30 watts and is only slightly higher than the GT730 and almost half the power draw of a GTX 750 GPU. In conclusion, I was really impressed and surprised by the level of performance this card offers, matching the power of old GTX cards, specifically the GTX 750, at a much lower price and power requirement. However, if you intend to game on your machine, I would suggest buying a GTX card such as the 1050 at a bare minimum. That's it for my quick video review of the GT1030 GPU from Palette, guys. Like, comment, subscribe if you found this video to be informative. As always, I'm your host, Paco Abnell, and I'll catch you in a future video.